How do you hide a giraffe? With zebra stripes. You don't. You just hope no one notices, and for centuries, no one did. The Okapi lives deep in the rainforest of the Democratic Republic of the Congo and are not found naturally anywhere else on the planet. They are so weird and secretive that people thought they were made up. A cryptid. A rumor. Jungle gossip. Because he looks like someone duct taped a zebra to a giraffe, then gave up halfway. The Okapi's ancestors have been wandering these forests for millions of years. That's before humans, before mammoths. It wasn't until 1901 that rumors of a mysterious striped creature deep in the Congo reached British explorer Harry Johnston. He thought he'd discovered a new species of maybe a donkey? Close, but no. Johnston became the first person to send Okapi skin and bones back to Europe. And that's how science got smacked in the face by a jungle cryptid. This is Nebit. His name is totally invented. He's quiet. He's strange. And evolution designed him in stealth mode. Most people have never seen an Okapi. Some don't even believe it exists. But Nebit is very real, and he's got some explaining to do. So, how does a giraffe with zebra stripes end up in the middle of a jungle? Nebit's story started in the Miocene era, around 10 to 12 million years ago. Back then, giraffes and okapis were one big weird family. They weren't identical, more like awkward cousins at a family reunion. Then giraffe split into two major branches. One team went for sky-high treetops. The other went full forest ninja. No towering neck, no flashy mane. Just a stealthy silhouette with built-in camouflage and something even weirder. His tongue is up to 18 inches long, muscular, prehensile. Basically, evolution's version of a multi-tool. Oh, and you don't just stumble through the jungle and find an okapi. You accidentally bump into one. And by the time you say, what the? It's gone. Nebit is a master of hide and seek. Solitary, silent, shadowy. He walks like the jungle programmed him for stealth. Even his hooves are soft, muffling his footsteps. He's not just shy. He's surveillance level elusive. For decades, even scientists weren't sure how many there were. But the locals in the Congo always knew. They called him the forest's ghost. You won't find Nebit in herds. And you won't hear him coming. We only figured out what they were doing out there thanks to camera traps, footprints, and a lot of guesswork. Imagine tracking a ninja giraffe in a rainforest while it ghosted you on purpose. He's crepuscular, only clocks in for work at dawn and dusk. He slinks between shadows like he owes someone money. And those stripes? They're not fashion. They're jungle barcodes, helping calves follow mom through the dark, leafy maze. And how does Nebit mark his territory? With his feet. He has scent glands at the bottom of his cloven hooves. So everywhere Nebit walks, he's saying, this is mine, also you smell weird. It's like jungle breadcrumbs dipped in aftershave. Imagine if your deodorant doubled as a jungle GPS. Nebit's does. And when Nebit wants to talk, he doesn't shout, he goes subsonic. He speaks in frequencies too low for human ears, a kind of infrasound only a few animals can pull off. It's like jungle telepathy. Elephants do it, and whales do it too. And apparently, so does Nebit. It's like jungle Wi-Fi. Messages travel through the undergrowth. So another Okapi half a mile away gets the signal. And Nebit doesn't just live in the forest. He listens to it. His giant radar dish ears swivel like satellite dishes, picking up the tiniest snap of a twig or the flap of a distant wing. He's not just tuned in. He's got surround sound. And then there's his vision. Those huge eyes on the side of his head gives him almost 360-degree vision. The Okapi has excellent eyesight, especially in low light. Perfect for those deep, dim forests where danger could be hiding behind any fern. Try sneaking up on Nebit. He saw you three minutes ago and already judged your outfit. It took humans thousands of years to notice him. Congratulations, Nebit. You're now officially a trivia question. And once we did notice him, we named him, measured him, filed him away in a dusty museum catalog. But Nebit was never a label. 
He's not just Okapia John Stoney. He's an entire whispering chapter of evolution. So next time someone tells you the world's been explored, that all the great discoveries are behind us, just remember, for centuries nobody believed the Okapi existed. And Nebit? He was right there the whole time.